Hello, I am Annalise, and today I am doing a review of Supernatural episode 3. I... that is a 3. Um, this was, I guess, I'd, I'd say the Halloween episode. Halloween episodes and Supernatural, along with Supernatural and Christmas episodes, are my favorite. I'm definitely going to say that this one has been my favorite so far, because it's so creepy and you have the horror into it and they kind of incorporated everything kind of around the horror which I just love so so much. Now we start off with this couple in this abandoned house or outside of this abandoned house and they hear this baby crying and just get this Halloween vibe in it, the creepiness and the guy's like I'm gonna call 911 and then five seconds later the female's like yeah, I'm thinking it's a smart idea to go inside. And they both go inside, they both get to this room, they see this really, really creepy doll. Now, I mean this doll is creepy. This is like that doll, what was its name? Not Chucky, the new one, starts with an A. Annabelle, I think, was it? It kind of looks a lot like that doll, except for it has no eyes and it has a bunch of black everywhere. Um, it, it, like, like, it was, it was almost a demonic doll. It was so creepy and great. And the girl screams, the door Sam shut, and suddenly her hand gets this burn mark on it, and we skip scenes. Now, we see a, a whole bunch of things start off in the beginning. Mary kind of uses Dean to get a case. Now, I, I, I was, I wasn't uncomfortable with that. I can see Mary as a hunter. She's burying her burden as Sam and Dean and I love that scene so much because this has always been Sam and his mother, Dean and his mother, the three of them, and that scene in the graveyard with Sam and Dean when they're supposedly burning the bones and they do talk about their mom and they talk about two brothers knowing the past and they, they weren't really talking about each other. I would eventually like Okay, have we ever gotten a debrief? Has Sam ever gotten a debrief about how the F Dean's alive? Context, please. I, I want a moment where the brothers ask, like, how are you doing with this? How are you dealing with the fact that our mother's back? Yeah, it's great and joyous and everything. And Sam kind of touches on it, but there's, there's, there's gaps. And they haven't been filled in. And they're finally, finally addressing the uncomfortableness of the situation. In that one little brother moment, it was just a very, very minuscule moment. But it was one of my favorites because I think we're finally getting some context. Now, in the beginning, Mary's like, let's go solve this case. And Sam is definitely more objective than Dean. But Dean is like, family hunting trip, let's go. Now, the family hunting trip line... Oh, it's the family business, hunting things, saving people, the family business. Oh, okay. I just thought of that, and I was just like, oh. And they, they do agree. Now, Castiel leaves. Castiel was so much humor in this one. So much. Let's, let's just break apart and talk about Castiel, Crowley, and Rowena. Just, just about that. That was my favorite part of this episode. It was so funny. Castiel ha leaves Dean and Sam because he has this hunt of this guy being Lucifer. He says, when I figure out for sure, I'll call you back. Yes, I watched this show for 12 seasons. No, you won't. And so he he talks to that bandmate. Uh, Vince was the guy who was possessed by Lucifer, I think. I don't think that's right. Can't remember his name. Uh, the guy for Springsteen. Point. Um, they interview his bandmate and he's talking about how it wasn't him, it wasn't naturally him, he was basically like possessed. Okay. Okay, we've established it is Lucifer. The best part of the entire episode, by far, by far, is when Castiel hands them the um, FBI business card and it says, Call me if you hear from him and you think it's fine. And the guy goes, okay. And he looks at the card. Agent Beyonce. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I couldn't. I couldn't. I couldn't. Agent freaking Beyonce. Cass. 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 Couldn't you have. Have you heard of Smith? What? Anything other than that? And then Castiel's walking by, and Crowley's at the bar, and he goes, Does that make me Agent Jay-Z? <laughs> I'm sorry. This was so great. This was so, so great. It was just like two 
completely idiotic moments. And I was like, oh my god, this is the dumbass cast I get. Oh, I've missed this. Crowley semi enforces forces Castiel to work with him because Crowley finds postcards from the guy who's a food possessed. His name is not Vince, I don't think, but I can't remember his name. And that's his sister, so they reluctantly agree to go. Now, when they get to their sister's house and they introduce themselves, oh, they stay with it as Agent Beyonce and Agent Z. And she actually buys it. The next second, she's calling the guy. He's like, there's two FBI agents outside. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Did the names not throw you off? And they're talking to him. They realize that she was once paralyzed and Lucifer touched her and healed her because Lucifer is an angel. You know, he does have that power. And they, um, discover Rowena has been kidnapped. Now, Rowena, okay, Rowena, I would love to hate her, but I can't, because she's amazing. I know she hasn't always been on the good side, but she plays for her own team. And I know they're like, oh, she uses everybody for power, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, okay, but she's very, very smart. Lucifer is, is, is torturing her, chaining her up blah 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 and he wants this vessel permanent so she comes up with this spell of of this strong tree thing drawing on his chest one of my favorite moments i totally didn't see this coming i didn't see Rowena getting out until a few more episodes and she says that she didn't actually strengthen his vessel. She made it decay like a shitload faster. So Lucifer's like dying, and he's like, "I'm going, I'm going to end you right now." One of my favorite lines: "You think finding a vessel's easy? Why don't you try finding one in the bottom of the bloody ocean?" And she like, I don't know what she does, but she she makes him disappear, and she's free. And the next second, Crowley and Cass walk in, and she's sitting in a chair with tea. Like, oh, if you're looking for Lucifer, you just missed him. And she's just. She's like a queen, okay? She's like the queen bee of witches. And and she, she does say she's completely out of the supernatural world. She doesn't want a part of it. But, which I kind of didn't get because, you know, Crowley kind of squirted over. But she, she's very, very, very angry at Lucifer. So she, she says that when they have the lead on him, she'll be with him. Okay, I, w I was I was kind of expecting this. I I like Rowena a lot, and I just I love the badassness they packed in this. They packed humor and badassness with her, and they packed the emotions and sentimental side with Sam, Dean, and their mother. And I just I loved the the all of the elements they managed to put into it. It was it was great. Now Sam and Dean and their mother. First they go to the Morticina, and um. He explains that the hearts had literally been frozen. I'm like, oh great, this is creepy and great. Now, we we start getting into the problematic stage of this episode real fast after that. When I go to this abandoned house and Mary gets locked in this room after seeing the doll, I don't know what it is which triggers the doll to get the door shut and whatever. And this little boy grabs her wrist and she has the burns like the other victim but her heart isn't freezing and he's a scared little boy. And I'm like, oh no, 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 we're not having Mary's first case case deal with family. Oh, great. And, um... Dean and Sam burst in and they, they swipe it with the iron or whatever and the ghost goes away. Back at the hotel, Mary is having this weird thing with the internet. She walks out, she's like, let's solve the case or whatever. And Sam and Dean are like, you know, we kind of got, got everything. We don't need to talk to people or whatever. We, we got everything from the internet. And she just has this look on her face from the internet like... Like, everything is unknown to her. And it's the first time I think she sold it in front of Sam and Dean. It's is hard, I think, to for them to see. There's, there's just a transition, and it's because of a minuscule thing, like not talking to somebody on the phone or, or meeting in person and finding out info on the internet. And she has this kind of flashback with the boy and the house and all of that. Sam and Dean's like, you stay here, we're gonna go salt and burn it, and they go have their sentimental for the moment. Now, 
My favorite thing was Mary is a Winchester. She does not sit around, ever. And she does it her way. She picks up the phone and she starts calling around. And she finds the little boy's mother. The little boy's name was Lucas. And um, she's, she's talking to his brother. And they're talking for, I think, a long time. And there's this line, no one talks to the phone. No one talks on the phone anymore. And so I get it. And I just, I think that tiny little detail is Mary connecting with somebody who understands that there's not a personal connection in society. She, she figures out about Lucas's death and she goes back to the house with weapons and all that in tow. And this was my favorite when it comes to creepiness because yay Halloween creepy shit and supernatural. And she goes and, and she finds Lucas and he, he is scared. He leads her to the basement and um, points to this boarded up wall. And he says the reason why he's here is because of him. And the other man ghost appears and, and starts freezing her heart. Next second you got Sam and Dean bursting in, saving the day again. But Mary gets possessed, and it's so creepy, and I was just like, yay, creepiness! Her eyes start bleeding black liquid, and I was like, holy shit, this is great. And, um, see, she's trying to strangle Dean. He pleads, the, he pleads with Mom a few times, and she, I guess, overpowers the possession very briefly, and tells Sam to go to the basement. Then the possession takes over. She at first is kicking Dean's ass. He then grabs a chain. So there's a dramatic climax between Jean, Dean holding her back and Sam burning the bones. And Sam, Sam's like whacking at that wall and burning real fast. It was great and creepy. And the whole time I was thinking, this is season one. This whole episode was season one. Like, yes, Cass is Angel, Lucifer, Rowena, thing to that. But... Dean and Mary and Sam is is season one. This is a case that would have been in season one and it was just the nostalgia and the creepiness and it was just so great and it was the original Supernatural. I love when it goes out of context as it does but sometimes you just need to go back to the place where you began and I just love that so so much in this one. And, um, they, they burn the bones and Mary is free to possess him. She explains to Dean that the man lost his daughter. He went insane, he bored himself up, died of starvation, and he killed every child after that. And it's just kind of, you see, the pa pain with children. Something's wrong with Mary. We've known this. We've known this ever since he's gotten back. But the dumbest part of this episode, dumbest part, gotta say, uh, very ending. Yeah. Um, so, so Mary decides to leave after explaining to Dean and Sam that she misses John. She misses them as they were when they were kids. And she was in heaven and they were kids and there was John and they were a family and now it's here and she doesn't have that. And I just, I'm sorry. This, this makes you leave. I could see being uncomfortable. It takes time to work it out. And she's mourning her loss of kids, loss of time. You mourn loss of time by running the time. You could just have little five minute sessions with Sam and five minute sessions with Dean about what the hell happened. And she doesn't know the true story. She, she's mourning John and she, she should feel a bit of resentment to him. And I think she, she should rightfully know that because he wasn't this perfect man she's making him out to be and he wasn't that great of a father. And I think, I think she just needs to know the whole circle. And so she decides to leave. Do you have any cash? Do you have a driver's license? Do you have a car? Like, uh, where is she gonna go? She has nowhere to go except for hotels. She doesn't have a credit card. I don't know if she has cash. She can't stay there forever. See, her reason for leaving is really idiotic and stupid because she's mourning the loss of how it was. Like, if you leave because of that, I when you find out the whole picture, I don't want to imagine that. She's going to be destroyed. And I was just like, Mary, Mary, no. No, no, no. This is... You have to not leave for this. I'm sorry. I just thought that was just like...
Oh, I couldn't stand her leaving because of this one little problem she has mourning the past, okay? And it's where we left off. The tiny parts and and may I think Dean is gonna be more affected by this than Sam. I think they'll both be greatly affected, but there is the time in the beginning with with the reference to bacon or how she turned the old rock and roll song up in the court or how she loved the chili and something flavored beef jerky that was Dean's favorite and I think that quite literally Dean as a female. And I, I, I think, feel, I feel like Dean would be most affected by this. I think Dean's the kind that wants to go and find her again. And we'll just, we'll see where it goes. Mary, you're not staying away for long. You're going to come back, okay? You, you, this is idiotic. This leaving is idiotic, okay? We have, we're going to have bigger problems eventually, okay? And we just have to move past things. I'm Annalise, thank you so much for watching. This has been my favorite episode of this season, and I did really, really enjoy it, and I loved the, all the different concepts they were able to weave in, and I loved the creepiness, Halloween-ness in it. I'm Annalise, I'll see you next time. Bye!